We're going to do an ABO and RH type on our patient sample today. So what I have set up here, I've got my EDTA sample on my patient, it's already been spun. So I've got um, plasma and cells. I know my plasma looks a little bit crazy, but our sample's a little bit old. Yours hopefully will look a little bit better. I've got my tube that's labeled with patient name, PHN, a session number, and 5%. So that's all ready, and it's about a third full of saline. And I've got tubes with the accession number, anti-A, anti-B, anti-D, A1 cells, and B cells. So those are the tubes that should be set up for each of your patients. So the first thing we want to do is remove the lid from our EDTA sample. Always check to make sure that the sample that's um, in your rack has the proper accession number beside it. So the accession number on this EDTA tube should match these tubes. The first thing we're going to do is go in and grab some plasma and pipette into my reverse grouping. So squeeze the ball down into the plasma, pick some up, and two drops into each of the reverse groupings. Notice that my pipette's being held vertically, and my pipette tip is above the tubes, not down close to the tubes. Okay? Back over and into the EDTA, go down to the very bottom and grab a few cells like we did when we made up our 5%. You may have watched a previous video. Rinse that into my existing saline in my 5% tube, discard my pipette, and I'm ready to get my 5% suspension washing. So forcefully add saline close to the top and into the serifuge for 45 seconds. While I'm waiting for that to wash, I'm going to pipette out my anti-sera into the forward grouping of my ABO. So I have my anti-sera rack right here behind um, the test tube rack. I grab the anti-A, just give it a little inversion, you don't have to shake it up too hard. Make sure you do your triple checks, so I'm reading it, it says anti-A, I'm pipetting one drop, I'm reading it, it says anti-A, and back in the rack and I read it a third time, anti-A. Continue that with each of your reagents, pipetting them into the appropriate tube. Now it's important to do a level check. So you need to hold your rack up and ensure that you have liquid in all of your tubes. The hardest one to see is that anti-D tube, so take a quick look and make sure you've got anti-D in that tube. Okay? Now, after uh, three washes, your cells will be ready to make up to 5%, so we'll pretend this is our third wash, and we'll dump that out gently and make it up to 5%. So remember, this is like a nice soft dump. Shake up your cells. It's a pretty good shake, my hands over the top to help prevent aerosols, okay, as opposed to shaking like this. It's not as efficient, so. And then just add some saline until you feel it looks like 5%. You can compare that to a comparison tube if you have one, or to one of your reagents. Back it goes beside your patient. Always do a quick check to make sure you've got your right tube beside the right patient. You grab another pipette and we're ready to pipette out our 5% patient cells into the forward grouping. With what I have left in my pipette, I'm going to throw this in the biohazard. Instead of risking putting this back in this tube and accidentally getting it into another tube if I'm doing more than one ABORH. So that's just going in the biohazard. My reverse grouping still needs cells in it. So I'm going to quite, um, quite carefully invert the cells because they will be stuck onto the bottom. Again, do your triple reading checks. Grab some cells and pipette one drop of A cells into the A reverse group. And one drop of B cells into the B reverse group. 
using good pipetting technique, vertical pipettes, and held above the level of the test tube so that you don't accidentally contaminate the dropper when you touch the test tubes. There you go. These are ready to be given a little gentle waggle and placed into the Syrafuge 15 second spin to look for agglutination.